thank you for tuning into Astro Awani and you are watching Silhouette. Silhouette this week features an exquisite lineup from the exclusive private house in Bangsa. The seven journey through time and the grand yellow diamond that rocks the world of fine jewellery by Muawad. A Journey Through Time is Asia's most opulent luxury watch and jewellery showcase. This partnership with the Ministry of Tourism and Culture Malaysia marks its seventh year in making Malaysia as an international destination of choice. Tahir Gallery house the most number of stand alone largest boutiques on this earth. There is no other place on this earth where the stand alone boutiques are this many and are this large. Only in Kuala Lumpur in Tahir Gallery. So we have to continue to take advantage of this retail experience. We are facing more and more competition from the surrounding Asian uh, and ASEAN economies trying to reduce a bit of their duties to prevent their people from shopping in Singapore or Hong Kong or Kuala Lumpur. Now. But uh, as long as our hospitality uh, and all these events like Journey to Time continue to make it bigger and bigger and uh, much more awesome, then it will at least give us a competitive edge against the others. Government announced a GST uh, on 20, to be implemented in 2015. Now, that's a positive move for the country's fiscal balance. Uh, but on the retail side, if we do not implement and uh, do this GST and turn it into our advantage, we may suffer uh, a bit of uh, a price differential uh, against other ASEAN economies who are duty-free, like for example in Singapore. But in uh, Malaysia's case, if we can think ahead of the curve, uh, most uh, shoppers still love to claim back GST. Uh, either in the airports or any other um, places where they can conveniently claim back to GST. Then I recommend that uh, we think ahead of the curve and implement not just at airport. GST collection centers should be in the city, in places like Sahir Gallery, where people buy big ticket items. Right? And this encourages them to uh, buy even more in Kuala Lumpur. This exhibition plays a major role in diversifying retail activities in Malaysia by providing high-end shopping opportunities on a global level. We have to make KL the image like the Paris of the East, but with quality food, quality shopping, and then quality resorts to go to. But we are also realistic that there are also Air Asia bringing a lot of budget tourists to come. And our country has all level of tourists, but the image uh, must be seen as very reliable. If you are buying pieces of jewellery and, and uh, watches, most people are afraid of the fake, uh, uh, what do you call that, Re reputation or the infamous reputation of Southeast Asian fake watches and all that. And that's how KL must, must distance ourselves from that. And with events like this, we must continually remind people KL is an awesome, the biggest uh, standalone boutique in the world, the most choice, the best pieces are found here in this journey through time. And people get it. Through time, people know that this, if you want to buy something authentic and expensive and uh, unique, this is KL and Stahe Gallery is a place uh, to come to, especially in events like this. So we must never stop a momentum of what we have already done especially uh, their increasing uh, competition from, uh, from uh, Southeast Asian countries and even Asian destinations. They are trying to copy uh, what KL is trying to do. The majestic yellow diamond, the centerpiece of the incomparable neckpiece, is the most valuable necklace in existence today. And here's the story behind the discovery of the incomparable by Muawad. The incomparable is a stone that was found in the Republic of Congo in the 1980s. And um, our family put our hands on it along with our partners uh, a little while ago. And we decided to put it into a necklace. It was a difficult exercise because it's such a big rock. It's the largest flawless diamond in the world. It weighs 407.48 carats, graded by the J as, again, the largest flaws in the world. So we decided to do, put it into a piece and come up with a design that would complement such a big diamond. Uh, we got inspired by nature. As you can see, um, 
leaves and branches are the theme. And we added another 230 carats of diamonds to have a total weight of 637 carats for the necklace. It's set in rose gold, it looks really beautiful. And we also decided to submit it to the Guinness World Record in London and it got uh, certified as the most valuable necklace in the world at 55 million US dollars. Mawat caters to the elite in this world. We sell to royalties, we sell to VVIPs, we sell to diamond collectors. We have in our collection very important diamonds that we've sold throughout the years. We build very special masterpieces. And this necklace, I'm sure, will find its buyer. It's currently on tour, and it will be worn by a woman who deserves nothing less. Muawad collections have created that distinguished buzz among Hollywood stars like Jennifer Lopez, Heidi Klum and Paris Hilton, just to name a few. Fred and Pascal Muawad, the fourth generation and co-guardians of Muawad, are visionaries and focused on continuing the company's growth by offering luxurious designs that evolved gracefully with time as well as creating a constructive shift for their target market. When my father headed the company initially, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to rethink about the brand. We realized we had this wonderful heritage. We had a great story with the GIA campus, with all the diamonds we had acquired throughout the years. And we also realized that most people thought of Mawad as being almost untouchable, that unless you had a huge sum of money to spend, you wouldn't walk into our stores. So what we wanted to do is really um, bring the brand and make it more accessible, democratize the brand. And uh, therefore, we started by redefining the look and feel of the brand. We came up with a new generation format, uh, new boutiques, with our new color scheme, which is gray and gold. We redesigned all the packaging. And then we started focusing on our collections. And we started having different price points. So not only focusing on the Ojiwanri masterpieces, but we also started focusing on the boutique items. And in that range, we've been very, very successful. We've seen a lot of growth in the last four years in that segment. We're launching a lot of collections, whether it's the Rosette, Flower of Eternity. Lately, we have the Love M, which is a very simple collection, lower price points. So we really want the brand to be much more accessible. And that's really the message um, that we want to convey to our clients today, that we're not only an aspirational brand, but we're also an accessible brand. And that's really the shift that has occurred over the last four years. Shoe genius, business mastermind, and most importantly, Malaysia's homegrown who made the country proud. Next on News. Muse gets up close and personal with the man who needs no introduction, Datuk Jimmy Chu. My family, my father is a shoe designer. So when I'm young, I follow my father's footsteps. And then uh, later, later, during 80, I went to uh, UK. I went to study uh, footwear design. So I went to Covina College. So when I finished my uh, two years uh, course, and then I went to uh, industry to working, get working experience. Because uh, only to attending uh, the course, you know, to study, it's not enough to have a practical experience. So when I finished my study and I applied a job from the factory, one of the design, uh, design firm, so, and they accept me uh, as an assistant. So from there, I learn you know, from the basic again, you know, and uh, there, we, there we are. So, uh, and after that, I decided I want to start my own business. So I look for the workshop in the East End. Uh, there used to be an old hospital, and um, I'm very lucky because my parents came as well. My father, my mom came and helping me. And how I started uh, only for my father, my mom, and myself, of course my wife as well, you know, to helping me to run the business. But the time uh, will be uh, very difficult as well. When you first started and you haven't had the reputation, the name, so nobody turned out, you know, they want to buy a shoe and associate with you. And uh, a lot of people 
by then because after a uh, year if the business is not doing well the financial will be difficult eh? a lot of them will be close close the business and do something else but for me i think i don't want to uh, stop my business because i feel i have potential and um, i do something else i'm still making sure but i'm making a very cheap sandal you know few pounds a pair four five pounds a pair and it's selling to the market and that's the survival need to get income to support my my dream. I met uh, two ladies. She came to me. Uh, they're the industry designer, you know. And they will say to me, to me, I want you to design a shoe for me to do a catwalk. No catwalk. To do exhibition during the London Fashion Week. So I say to them, if you want me to design something for you, but I must spare my name. Like Jimmy Choo for Elizabeth, Jimmy Choo for Bernard, you know? They say no, no, no question, you know, we can do that. So that's how we start, you know. I think about four to five days after the exhibition finished, I received a call from the Vogue office. There was a cake feeling. Cake was an assistant for uh, Sarah Jane Hall, those, those times, you know. But now Kate is a very, Kate Phelan is a big name now, you know. And uh, she says she wants to feature my shoe, you know. So, well, if you vote want to feature your shoe, you'll be very happy, you know. So I say yes. Uh, so I asked her what she wants. She wants all the collection, you know, for the spring summer. And um, then I put everything together. I sent to Kate. And after August, uh, there are eight pages for me. I'm in the spine page as well. Before I do that, before I do my collection, I was, I was very uh, careful and think to get into the press, to get into the buyer. Your design had to be very standing out, very unusual. Isn't it? Then people will buy from you and the press will be attention for you. Isn't it? So I was uh, very lucky because that was uh, spring, summer, you know, collection. So I designed a shoe with all the roses, all the flowers and everything, you see. And uh, the colour, uh, spring, summer, you can use a lot of beautiful colour color as well, you see. Um, that's it. Kate took the shoe and they get eight page. Since then, it's a lot of magazine, newspaper, TV station asked me for a shoe for the editorial. Also a designer as well, a lot of designers like Paul Smith, uh, Jasper Conran, uh, you know, you name the top designer in the UK, they all come to me as well. And uh, so from there, suddenly my shoe and all the magazine, newspaper, TV, and all the catwalk show, you know. They went and uh, designing shoes for Helmut Land as well. So that time only myself, my father and my mom. It's no, 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 some, but no anyone, you know, to, can help me. To, to build up the uh, reputation, you know. So I thanks to my parents, you see. Without my parents, it wouldn't be today as well. Although I sold the business uh, 12 years ago, you know, but I'm still carrying the Jimmy Choo Kuchu designing for society, for the royal family, for, you know, for the film star, Hollywood star, and uh, high society. So I'm, I'm never stopped designing. I never stop what I want to do, you see. That's what the reason. That's what people still want me, and uh, they give me a award. You know, uh, even a lot of school, fashion school, they want me to visit them, talk to the young people, and encourage them. You know, I think everybody can be like me, successful. You know, if they have uh, believed themselves. My son, uh, Danny, Danny Chu, and Emily Chu, they both can designing. They both can make shoes because when they're young, they follow my first step. You know. So if you ask, ask them to design, you know, ask them to make it through, it's no problem, you know. They have that kind of knowledge. You learn years old, I designed a best shoe for my mum. So in the old day, we didn't have a computer, we didn't have a TV as well. So what you do, you finish school, you finish your homework, you concentrate and see what my parents do, you see. So when I was young, I learned all the skills from my father, learned all the all the designing, all the making, you know, from the master, shoe master, you know. That's why skill is very important. If you give me a shoe, you know, those are very, very good experience, you know, master. They look at your shoe, they know right or wrong. Balance, not balance, you know. The position has to be very good. Shoe is an art. Shoe is not a piece of shoe only, you know. 
it's just, just a shoe, you cannot make it represent yourself, man. Cobbler, what's a cobbler? Cobbler just making shoe in the street, you know? You have to be, have very good knowledge. You have to have a design knowledge, then you have to have a making knowledge as well. So in the old days, everything had to be raw material. For the beginning, you know, you had to cut your leather, cut the sole, and put the thing together. It's experience. Experience you learn from your master. You respect your master, you know? Then you can learn more skill from them, you see? It's not easy to become a student in the old days. Because when you don't return to them, you don't respect them, they won't pass you on, they won't pass you on the skill as well, you see? So you not only be a student, you have to know how to respect your teacher. You know, then they'll pass on the skill for you. But now to say people to understand, it's very important, I think, to say thanks to the teacher. Everyone can work hard. Work hard is not good enough. You, have, you also have to be smart as well. To train your mind, to turn your mind. You know, in the beginning I say, the business is not doing well, nobody come out, because why I haven't got a name? Who want to come to, the, to my workshop to associate with me? Even 50 pounds, nobody want to buy from me. But now I say I'm charged 5,000. People want to queue up to buy my shoe. Because why you set your good reputation. You, they know you are very respect them. You have a good design, good production. They want to buy from you. Because all my shoes are handcraft, all the couture ones. You know, it's according to the person it's designed for them. You think. So it's a personal service. <laughs> They have to know the design has to be unusual, the quality has to be good, you know, and the delivery, if they have an order, delivery has to be on time as well. All this one, if you, you know, if you can keep as a good knowledge, definitely they can make it, you see, you know. And if you look at Jimmy Choo all over the world, it's not only Malaysia or, or London and all that, I think. So wherever I go myself, you know, I travel different part of the world. People also very welcome me because I do a lot of uh, education talk as well to pass on my knowledge to do workshop with you know all over the world, the steering and all things you see. I think myself because I love my country. You know, I belong to Malaysia. Malaysia belong to me. So I want to come back more. I want to set up uh, maybe it's, uh, uh, two more workshop. You know, encourage the young people. You know, follow my first step. My, my good, good partner Jody, Mama, he had that kind of vision many years ago. He said we want to do something to encourage the people to come to our country, to visit our country. At the same time, we also give a designer a platform to show the design. So you have to start first. You know, if you don't start, then nobody starts then. So now, this thing, now uh, no few weeks ago, the, the KL Fashion uh, Weekend Shopping already kicked off. And you see, we have an international designer, Sandra Roses, here, here as well. At the meantime, myself and Jody also in my Georgia, you know, the fashion designer, came over here to witness the whole thing. I think this one is very important. Once you start, but not only start one season, the second season you have to start. But more important is the media has to be helping us as well to promote, to talk about. Because the internet is very, uh, internet, is, uh, media is very strong. People look at what we do in our country. But if you look at now, we have more and more students coming out, more and more uh, fashion schools set out in our country. Yet, so many universities want to come into Malaysia, you know, you know, to part of our uh, education with our country. So we must do something and don't stop, then up, stop, up, stop again. We must follow. We must begin, as I say, we invite. We must invite a top designer, you know, come over to Malaysia, to KL, to talk about fashion to talk about, you know, how difficult they start, you know, when they first started. Not, not all the designers, they make it, you know, so good. They must go through very difficult to become today, you see. I made my name for myself, I made the name for my country. I never show up. I never think I'm a, you know, I'm a very rich man. I am not think I'm a great designer. You know, somebody better than me. Only thing, maybe they don't show up. They're very down to earth, they're very low key. The better, the better designer, the better one, you know, who have a knowledge and good obligation, they never show up. You know, that's my father said. Only those people didn't have the good knowledge, they always want to blah, 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 and talk about themselves, you know. So I taught my children, I taught my students, they never say that you're the best. Because why the best one is behind you. You must learn. Learning, learning never stops.
to feel yourself good and think you're good. You, when people say they're good for themselves, very, they're like a hero, they're not a hero to me. You see? Good people always have to keep talk less and do more to show the society. That's a good, that's a very good person. You see? Let's go for a short break. When we come back, Cyclopedia. A scent for every moment. A scent that goes beyond the body, that feeds the mind and soul. MFK, the luxurious perfume on Cyclopedia. The luxurious scent of Maison Francis Kirgian, founded in 2009, has finally reached our shores. Housed in the Grand Hyatt Hotel in KL, this collection of bespoke scent and sensuality exudes the sense of freedom to its every man and woman. This magical concussion of creative power and taste of precision in perfumery has successfully created this collection of scents for every occasion. All thanks to this Paris-born artist turned perfumer, Francis Kirgian. My line is, I thinking about building the perfect fragrance wardrobe. I don't believe a woman wearing the same fragrance all year long, all day long. It's like basically wearing the same dress in the same color every day. So to me, perfume works the same. And I don't think about a woman wearing the same scent over and over, like from working out to working, because women are multiple. Therefore, I do believe that you can be loyal to a brand, loyal to a, to a designer, loyal to a cut, to a quality, and yet having different types of perfume. So the, the brand is built as a fragrance wardrobe, meaning we have eau de toilette, eau de parfum in different stories, different colors, different... Uh, when I say colors, it means to me um, different emotions because if I think about Aqua Universalis, which is a feeling of freshness and that can be related to uh, cotton and blue jeans and white shirt, and if I think about Amiris, which is very, uh, Amiris pour femme, which is very feminine, uh, effortless elegance, or if I think about Oud, which is very like fur coaty or leathery, it's all different state of mind, different state of being, being a woman or being a man. And then we have also accessories. We have uh, scented candles for the home. We have um, even a scented laundry product. Uh, so, you, so your fabric is uh, kind of uh, luxuriously, I would say, uh, washed in a way. So it's that diversity of product that, that, that interests me. For me, I, I never have one single woman or one single man in my mind. It's more, some, it's more abstract, even though I'm thinking about a, it's more about thinking about the silhouette or a shape or an allure. It's more about that. Because putting people, I hate putting people on the box. And to, to think about a blonde woman wearing that type of thing would be very restrictive to me. And I try to, even though we are a very luxurious brand, so that means that um, products are costly, they are expensive to make, they are made in France, uh, most of them are handmade. made. So they have a, there is a price behind each product. I try to talk to the most people that I can. So pe putting people in the box, targeting only one type of person is very hard for me to do. However, um, I think that my general customer is looking for obviously quality, that's for sure. Also something different from what you can find on the market because I've, I'm known for my other work for other designers. I'm known to create groundbreaking perfumes, to, to create new new records and, and outstanding perfumes. So I think people are in the need and, the, and, and, and not only the need, but they're looking for that under my own name. That's all the time we have for this week. Don't forget, silhouette next week, same time, same day, only on Astro Awani. See ya!